what your insurance looks like. Right. She does it barefoot <laughs> in her teepee with. No teepee. Barefoot, yes. <laughs> barefoot, yes. <laughs> Don't mess with that woman. No teepee. Can you sidearm it? Or is it just. I've never I seen can it. Shoot a All right, we're on. <laughs> so uh, please join me in the pledge. Go on. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Kirshner, you have something for us today? Sure. Please join me in short prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this season. We hope that the Christmas spirit fills our hearts throughout the year. We ask that you give us the wisdom to make decisions that are in the best interest of those we serve. And we ask, as always, in a special way for you to protect those protecting our freedoms. We ask all this through your son. Amen. Amen. Roll call. Commissioner Thomas? Here. Commissioner Kirshner? Here. Commissioner Paradiso? Here. I'll accept a motion to approve the digital audio video recording of the previous board session from Thursday, December 19th. So moved. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Commissioner Kushner? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. All right, administrator's report. I guess I'll just give you an update on um, revenues and budgets. Budgets is sitting at, uh, we're sitting at 17.8, and our revenue now to date is 17.8. So that is not including the last. Sheriff's hundred thousand that came in uh, a couple of days ago. So. It did come in. It did come in, but it's not in the seventeen eight yet. She said she'd get it paid in this so week. So we're getting closer to eighteen than seventeen eight or seventeen eight. We're at seventeen eight right now. <laughs> that, that includes three hundred thousand of the advance repayment. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Yep. And that was. And we're setting at one point two for the month. That does not include that advance repayment this month as it was last month. Yeah, okay. Good. So, I think that's all I had. Did you want to talk about scheduling and stuff, or is that on the agenda? I, yeah, I just had it on under new business. Okay. Do you want that or your reports or anything? We'll go, we'll do our reports and then we'll come circle back around. Okay. Uh, Mike? Uh, just, you know, Christmas week, um, yesterday, as people read the paper, the Noah dinner was uh, more than a thousand folks. What a, what a wonderful situation that was. A lot of people worked very hard. Congratulations to that group. Um, that's really all I have. <clears throat> September 9th, 1981. <laughs> Commissioner's not done slashing allocations. <laughs> so he was doing some cleaning. Uh, I'm going to read a couple things here. <laughs> Just cleaning where? You found that here? <laughs> <laughs> not born yet. But, uh, <laughs> county's commissioners say they may be looking at about $270,000 cut in allocations. Oh. The chairs cost. We're going to need to allocate money for our chair. How's the insurance look? Which was decided before County Auditor Rick Smith finishes an updated certification of county finances. Commissioner Dale Stacy said the amounts will depend on personal property tax receipts, but that in the meantime, commissioners are already cutting what they can. They asked soil and water to cut by 20% or 16000 20% of their budget. I'm told the extension office not to fill a vacancy, saving 17.5. Warn the fair board they may not see all its $15,000 allocation. As for the cuts, which may be coming, Stacy said they won't come in one large package. Most cuts will come little by little. He estimated about 100,000 may be saved by making more of these little cuts along the way. So just. So a big stab, just a little slits. Of little cuts. Yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Daly Turner said the city of Tiffin has helped the county by agreeing to settle for about <coughs> half the 43,000 ambulance contract bill this year. So we have, uh, uh, and then as part of the budget cutting, prosecutor, uh, prosecuting attorney Tom Spellerberg said that his office sent a revised budget for 1982 to the commissioners Thursday, including 36,000 less than originally planned. 
Spellerberg also said he dropped his plans to hire an assistant to save twenty-two thousand. So it's just the same story, only thirty-eight years later. Uh, say what's total budget was that year? Uh, it doesn't. Uh, it does say the only good financial news the county has received recently, it discovered a windfall of $119,000. That money was left over from a construction bond issued to the School of Opportunity. Smith and Spellberg have recommended to the commissioners that they go to Common Police Court to request a transfer of that money to be put in the county general fund. And so that's that. The other thing that's kind of neat here is that uh, tires were two for fifty dollars at Goodyear. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote that? What was so this was written. Uh, this is the AT Rick Rummelsbaugh. <laughs> Rick Rummelsbaugh, Advertiser Tribune, September 9th, nineteen eighty-one. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Yeah. That's only a few years after. After uh, or but before you I have there. Rick Rummelsbaugh, Spellberg, Dale Stacy, and uh, I don't Mr. Turner. Rick. Well, Rick. They were all yeah, there. <laughs> no. They were, yeah. all, they were on budgets a lot earlier than we were. Yeah, yeah this September was September. Yeah. yeah. Right. They were on the same calendar year, right? Yeah, but everything was paper, so it took a lot longer. <laughs> That's my report. Nice. Yeah, we had the tallest auditor in the state for a while. Yes. So yeah, yeah, Rick Smith. Smith. They, they keep track of those things? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. He was 65, I'm guessing. Jim Hoops was an auditor, too. He's, he's probably a man. Crazy. Uh, the only thing I wanted to talk about was capital budget and the jail funding. Good. We got a, a some response back from the County Commissioners Association. You see that, mm -hmm. and I'd like to maybe have Sheriff and Dave Paul come in and talk about the jail, and so that when we're ready to move, if the CCA was ready to move, we're ready to move because. DeWine seems to be signaling that he's going to give us some additional money statewide. And Stacy got together our budget estimate, and we were one of 44 counties that are in the queue. And we have almost a million dollars worth of work that we could do out of jail. So, be huge. I would like to figure out how to pour a little accelerant on that. And yeah, because they said if we had more capacity, they could have more prisoners. Obviously, we would need more more revenue. So, so I certainly think we should be. have that conversation. So okay. we have, we have, we're ready with our letters of support. And, you know, we get Bill, you know, get it to Bill because Bill's going to run trap. I forwarded it to Mike Ditto, so that he puts it on his radar. But I don't, I don't want to miss that opportunity because there's a lot of counties in there that had requests. I went through them all. $45 million, $55 million, they can certainly throw us yeah. a bone. Mm -hmm. This is additional money on top of our capital. Yeah, yeah. Different, right. different, same pool. bucket, different yeah. category. Category. Same well, different bucket. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sure. that's, that's it. Quote that, well, will you, That was just you. He's used that line with Joella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same one. Yeah, All yeah, right. Good job on that. Talk about it. That would be great. Who was the other thing you brought up? Besides the jail? That was it. I just went. Oh. CCAL for it. C yeah. yeah, thanks. So the only thing I had mentioned the last time was if we get closer to 18 than we did another number that we ought to consider. Uh, Specifically, designating some money for uh, human resource next year and moving some money into the budget stabilization fund. Um, I, I know that we're not certain of where things are going to come in, but the certainty looks more on the higher side than it does the lower side. So uh, I don't know what your appetite is for doing that formally at this point. Uh, but so we have a high-level budget. We have a job description and we have a study that indicates that we need it, right? Oh, for HR? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying spend the money, I'm just saying designate it so that we're in a position to be able to do it if we want to pull the trigger. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think the next step is doing a search, right? 
I mean, yeah, that would be, yeah, that would put, be the line. putting the money in place and doing the search. I mean, that's where we're at, right? Yeah, I think I would probably like to get the folks in that have the largest uh, number of employees one more time, just to make certain we're all on the same page. Um, DJFS and uh, maybe the sheriff and a couple other folks that uh, spend a lot of time at HR activities uh, to make certain that you know we get some buy-in. And as for the budget stabilization. We've got how much in there now? Five. Five hundred. Okay. So I thought maybe we'd add a, a hundred. You haven't budgeted anything for the stabilization fund at this point, right? I'm not. So we would need make an authorization, and you'd have to move the cash sometime in the first quarter. Is that what you're thinking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless you were going to try to do it today. I'm not ready today, but no. Okay. You yeah, want to put that on? Yeah. I can put We the, can move the cash when. Yeah. Even after tax revenues come in, okay. so we get it done. So we're, we're talking one twenty-five. <clears throat> it's fine with me. I get right. you know if, if things go right, well. Right, so four times, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we're talking two things: the human resource line item budget, right, right, and then the stabilization fund. Yeah, and I don't know that one fifty is going to cover human resource. I just know that it'll, it'll be a, you know, the largest part of it for sure. But at least we know Your that it's coming to me and we plan for it. And we designate that, designate that money for that function as opposed to using it for something else. Just for uh, to continue with the budget stabilization, Stacy mm -hmm. printed um, the carryover amount. Right. And if it's okay, I'm just going to round it. So in 13, uh, we had 2.4 million, 14, 2.8 million. 15, 3.1 plus million, 16, 3.1 plus million, 17, 2.7, last year 1.7, and this year I think we're kind of feeling a million range, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so uh, we can talk about this after the first of the year, but I'm kind of in the mindset and we're getting the receivable money from Wolf Creek and the right. fiber. We don't have that yet. Yeah, she, yeah, Shane's talked about those things. Yeah, but, but, but just as we said here, the 500 in the stabilization fund is there, but this carryover, just, these carryover numbers never included. How much do we have to advance for Wolf Creek? So that was like a five year. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. How much? 500? Yeah. Well, I just don't want to. I just don't want those those numbers to get too far out of focus because even though it shows a drop in the carryover, we advance five hundred dollars that comes back. So right. one of the numbers would not have dropped by five hundred. Oh, we're gonna. We're not done so that. these right. We need those numbers. Right. We don't have them. That's yeah. why I said we do not have those. Yeah. Numbers I, yet. Yeah. I just want to make sure that, that it's part of your whole carryover scenario. It will be part of. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. The budget stabilization fund is new. On top of that, the so that that could, carry over that could be part of the carryover. Yeah, it's new. Well, we put in five hundred thousand since the time we talked about it dropping. So five hundred thousand, uh, would you say two point or one point something? Last, last year. year was one seven. Okay, so if you had five hundred, so it would have been two three. Well, and five hundred for Wolf eight, Creek and eight hundred for the Medicaid. Yeah, eight hundred for Medicaid. So you know we've got it's more like three point four. <laughs> yeah, and it was three one three one. It was two eight three one three one. So it's always yeah. it's been in the threes. Yeah, yeah. So it's still in the well. It's in. The I, I like the two things. <laughs> it's in the well, but I, I think I'm, I'm good with the two things you bring up, and it's, I love the 125 budget stabilization. Right. I, I support it. I should say, but um, we also, when we passed the budget, we kind of said we would review everything. Right. Uh, sometime after the first of the year. I don't know what that means. If it's April or March or you know, at some point, uh, to look at other departments that had made cuts, had tightened their belt. Um, and I just want to insert the, these comp these two components as part right. of the conversation. That's all. But don't forget, we did not implement any raises. And if we implement a 2% raise, for example, it's 100. then that'd be 200. 200. That'd be we 200. did authorize 1%, but we didn't budget it. So we'll have to do that at the first two get. Well, okay. we do have a 1% for everybody. Yeah, but right. I, it wasn't included in the budgets because you guys just said we would do that. Because we may need to have some more conversation about that after the first. <coughs> we will, along with right. these conversations. Okay, so we're good. 
Yeah, so I uh, second Mike's so you motion. Want, you want to bring something in next to next week when those two items? We don't have board next week. I mean, we don't have board until after the first. Yeah. Well, we make a form next type it up. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'm good with it. That's fine. Okay. And then we'll for sure have at least what they certified it on the thirtieth. Two seconds. Yeah, we'll know the number. Anyway. Yeah. There might okay. be other discussions at that point, depending on the number. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Can you do that. We're good. Yeah. All right, uh, Commissioner Sport, uh, any old business? Nope. New business. Got a request. Me? You, yep. Okay. Well, uh, first thing I want to say is uh, keep the, the Anderson family in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, Eileen Anderson was an EMT paramedic with us for over 20 years, lost her fight to cancer yesterday. And um, so she's got two children and um, a whole extended family that's uh, suffering right now a little bit. But she is watching over us and she is uh, no longer in pain. So that's a good thing. She had liver cancer and she suffered with that for a little less than a year before she passed away yesterday, which is unfortunate and terrible, but we know she's no longer hurting. So that's a good thing. So I just wanted to say that to you guys so that you know, uh, everybody in the county knew Eileen and she worked for the county for many years and then we one dispatcher and as a EMT from a basic level all the way up through paramedic and uh, an instructor. So she'll be missed. Uh, anyway, so what I'm here for is to uh, let you know that we bought brand new monitors back in 2015. Cardiac monitors, defibrillators, the whole unit that we purchased. And uh, this year, um, Philips Electronics, which is uh, most of the hospitals around here use them in their in hospital, and we use them, and uh, they lost FDA approval. So I'm not exactly sure how that happened. I'm sure it's well above my pay grade to even understand how those things happen at the large business level. So what, what I've done in the past few months has been on a search for a replacement for them. Um, we're not in a huge hurry because we've got a year. But right now we're sitting financially in a spot where we have the money to purchase new monitors. Um, about five or six years ago, we started using Zoll products, Zoll Medical. Um, they're pretty widely known uh, in the EMS community as having some of the best equipment in the world. Uh, there's a lot of studies out there that you can follow at, that, that show that. And we started down that path with the auto pulses that we purchased using grant money and also with the rescue CPRs that you saw in the newspaper. And we had John Monk come down and do a piece on. Um, these monitors will work in concert with them, these new Zoles that we're looking at. Uh, I have the purchase agreement letter in front of you and also the quote. I did quote out two other companies as well. This is the best device and it actually it turns out to be the cheapest. So um, this is that was the request I had won't be any general fund money we've got it budgeted it's uh unfortunate we have to spend the money as soon as we did because that budget that i put together is for equipment and ambulances now i like to buy a new truck every three to five years but in 2016 we got a, a pretty good sized uh, safety intervention grant where we bought three trucks mm -hmm. so that put us a little ahead of the game and we thought well we're going to be sitting pretty financially and, uh, and then this happened so be careful what you wish for mm -hmm. you know so we are looking at spending $206,000 on brand new, nine brand new monitors for all of the trucks, including the Echo unit. And um, those do it all, though. They do transmit the 12 leads. They do end tidal CO2 monitoring, cardiac monitoring, non-invasive blood pressure monitoring, all the things, and, and uh, pulse oximetry, all the stuff that you see on TV, these do that. So um, we get some trade-in value. And that's another thing. If we, if that's why I'm here on the 26th day of December, is because our trade-in quote is good till the 31st. So yeah. $6,500. We only paid 13,000 new for the uh, each for the Phillips back in 15 and 6,500. We're, we're almost getting half our money back. Um, and and you know, you're going to hear a lot of different things. The Phillips monitors are still fine machines. They're just no longer going to be FDA approved for use in this country. But it's a global economy and these devices still have worth in Canada and many other places that don't pay attention to the FDA. And so they, they still have value. And if we trade them in relatively soon, I think they're gonna 
you know, we'll, we'll still Do you have an idea what function of the Phillips they're concerned about? Uh, there's been a few little electrical issues that they had problems with, but every recall that we, they ever did, they came here immediately and fixed. Um, but I think it might be um, clerical. I think there was some paperwork screw-ups that they didn't get something in on time. And it depends on who you ask. You know, right. I'm talking to salesmen, and a lot of times those are what you call reputable. They're just trying to sell you a product. So I did a bunch of research outside of that as best I could. And the uh, only thing I can find is they say they, that Phillips got tired of messing with the FDA on the EMS component because the EMS has so, many, um, so much compliance that they have to do. They just said, well, we're just not going to sell those monitors anymore in this country. They sell them in 57 other countries, and I think their business is big enough that they just chose not to sell them here anymore and not go through all that. Um, so... What are we talking about? What, what's the size? What, give me a visual description of this monitor. Um, uh, it's a cardiac monitor. These actually, the ones we currently have are about yay big, they weigh about 25 pounds. They have a big screen on it, shows you the oscilloscope, yeah. the, the um, electrical output of the heart, plus blood pressure, pulse rate, blood oximetry, and, uh, and uh, carbon dioxide level. Uh, the, the new ones will be about the size of this. They weigh 12 pounds. They have a little case that hangs on the outside so you can put all your extra wires and stuff in it. And, uh, and these are portable? They are. They're pro portable. They have a battery that lasts about six hours. Um, and they stay plugged in in the truck when they're not in use. And they, uh, it's lithium ion powered. These are some of the best so units. Tall socks, mm -hmm. Does it all. cardio, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. And it's the kind of monitor you see if you're in a hospital on the crash cart. Yeah. Crash no. cart monitor. Yeah. I, okay. Uh, and then, so nine of them? Yes. And those are? All seven of our first run trucks, our backup squad, and our Echo. Okay. And currently I carry a Phillips, but I'm probably going to start carrying an AED just to save cost. Fizzle was um, state term right. bid price. They won state term, so we didn't have to get quotes because they already bid on them, but we got, went ahead and went out for, uh, got another bid anyway. Right. I got quotes on LifePacks. LifePack is a big name. Um, they're also really big price, and um, I, I like them, but they're, they're just too expensive. They, they don't do anything more than these do. These are great machines. Um, our neighbors to the north use them. Also, our neighbors to the west use them. So that's Sandusky County, Wyandotte County, and Hancock County all use, and the city of Fostoria uses all as well. So um, we're, we're just stepping into the mainstream when we use these. The reason I didn't buy these before and they were available is because at that time, Phillips had a better price. And to me, they all three do the same thing, really, ultimately. You're getting the training support you need? Yes, uh, they, they, they do have a, a implement, implementation team that comes out of the Wauseon area. Um, a gentleman I used to fly with at Life Flight, uh, he he's, heads that implementation team up and he comes out and does training. Plus, um, I use these same devices when I work at flight, so I'm pretty well versed in how to use them and I can do the training. And I'm comfortable with them, and uh, most of our medics have used them in the past. Um, these are really good devices. Uh, I hate to have to buy them because ours are only five years old. Yeah, I, it's just, it that's just too bad because it doesn't sound like the Phillips are obsolete. They're not, and they work perfectly, and they're fine. I've had no problems with them. Yeah, and uh, I, would, I would, personally today, if FDA didn't change. I'd buy new Phillips today, and um, they work perfectly. Yeah. Just yeah. no longer going to be FDA approved. What's the average lifespan typically of these? Twelve things? to fifteen, about, about twelve to fifteen years, depending on abuse. And we don't abuse them. Um, some places, you know, Toledo Fire, bigger, bigger fire departments, bigger EMS agencies that run five, six thousand calls a year, they, they beat them to death. Probably have to change them out every five to six years. Yeah. So we extend that basically by t twice as much. We just don't beat them up. Yeah. So what I'm asking is uh, your authorization to purchase, and then we need to send our quote and, pr and contract over to the prosecutor to make sure he can look at the what they call the T's and C's, which is the uh, terms and conditions. Sounds like thoughts and prayers and essential oils to me. <laughs> uh, it's, it's all Greek, so they'll let the th let the lawyers look it over and make sure we're not signing something wrong. Okay. So I accept the motion to so we'll spend a quarter million dollars today. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, 
Tony Sai. Two hundred six. We'll probably yeah. we won't put it in place until yeah. twenty twenty six. Obviously, we won't put it in place till next year. Um, but we just needed the authorization to move forward with Derek so we could get it signed. Great discussion. Uh, show me this question. Yeah. Oh. And uh, so just so we can get the training value in. Okay. They build these to order, so we'll get them around March, April. Okay. And we won't have to pay till then. Discussion? Any? I don't know. We have a second. Okay. Yeah. It was a deep sigh. Was it? That was like <laughs> 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 No. No. <laughs> No, yeah. yeah, comment? Yeah, it's a good question. Is, is the department required to have the FDA stamp on the equipment? Yes. Is it, that is, okay. Right. It is, it is required by the state of Ohio to have FDA approved devices and also by federal statute, which is the um, uh, Centers for Medicare and Medicare Services, Medicaid Medicare Services, CMS. If you don't use FDA approved devices, you're not authorized to bill for service. Yeah, and I assume that goes with grants and those kind of things as well. You're yes, disqualified if you didn't. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we want we we've maintained compliance across the board on everything we do, and, and exceed it in most cases. Um, but a monitor, in, in my opinion, don't tell the, the salesman will argue with you. But a monitor is a monitor. Doesn't matter who makes it. They all do the same thing. How long are they approved by FDA? That that is a really good question. You get and reapproved every year. No, I believe their their approval process is a five year deal, but I could be mistaken on that on on what they call durable medical equipment. But I know that there's a reallocation <coughs> process like you have to do. We have to do that for Medicare, Medicaid, and all the things that we do every five years, and they dig deep into you. And I think what happened to Phillips is they got tired of the process and just backed out. And uh, they're a huge multi billion dollar company and, and they just chose not to do business in this country. In the old, EMS market. How old are they now? Our machines? Yeah. Five years old. So they could fall out of approval. Then. Right, yeah. They will end yeah. on February third of twenty twenty one. They fall out of approval. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Parisa? Yes. Commissioner Kirshner? Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Thanks, Ken. And thanks for those kind of words. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Okay, other new business, appointments. Yeah, I just wanted to start the conversation. We usually do the official appointments and uh, first meeting of the year, which will be the ninth. Um, but I figured we'd start the conversation and then also think about, uh, are we gonna stick to Thursdays? We've got a few departments want to schedule bid openings. So um, <coughs> kind of wanted to yeah, I'd like, to stick, with you. I'd like to stick through Thursdays the first quarter anyways, because that's where we're at. And uh, I know, Shane, we talked about your possible WSOSGO cap maybe change, and I would take, uh, I can take a look through on NCO or revisions, whichever one you want to, fair is fair, I'll take one so you can get the okay. other one. But take NCO and I'll, I'll take WSOS. That's fine. Is it WSOS actually a commissioner's appointment? GO cap. Is it actually a commissioner's appointment or yeah. is that something no. carried in? It's not a commissioner's appointment. It, it, a commissioner from Sadowski Seneca okay. and uh, Ottawa, I think, are all on it. Got it. Well, why not Seneca, Ottawa, and Sadowski? <laughs> yeah. 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 That we do make appointments to it as well. Yeah. And appointments. Like I said, we don't have to just decide all today, but I didn't know if you guys right, wanted I just, to. Uh, that was one thing. Okay. What so, do you want to add, Tom? You want some more? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Say go fish. Uh, uh, you want me to take that? Well, it seems to yeah, be. Yeah, I'll take kind of that. Out there, nobody's really okay. on top of it. So, but I would. I'm happy to cover any time. I mean, I yeah. Well, Fairboard, same night as your WSOS now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got it. And then, uh, yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll work it out, but I'll, I'll take whatever you need me to do. Yeah. All right. And then we're Thursdays, 10 o'clock, for at least the first quarter. Oh, that's right. Sound okay. Yeah. 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 Schedule them out. Unless we have some holiday conflict or something that okay. I'm not aware of. So. Okay. First quarter is pretty quiet. And yeah, the first meeting next year is the 8th or 9th. Right. That's our reorganization meeting, right? Yep. And we'll go 
go from there. We'll go from there. Good. That will be my first one, but that yeah. night's gonna ever say that. <laughs> Take a week off of it. <coughs> no meeting next week. I'll take a week off. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> okay. I have a couple supplemental requests. I have one from the sewer district um, to put five hundred five thousand or no shoot, shoot five hundred five dollars. A little bit of a difference. Hey, Julie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would only be five cents. <laughs> <laughs> Funds needed for the transfer out to pay the USTA loan <laughs> for the new Regal Sewer facility. $505. And the next one is a request from Victim's Assistance. Um, they're requesting $3,112.24 into her equipment line. And this is a grant from Tiffin Community Foundation to purchase a new computer. Resolution authorizing a fund transfer to be made to the Public Assistance Fund. Um, $51,767.90 from their child support to their um, child support contract services to the transfers and child support. And then they're doing a, a, a transfer be made to the public assistance fund from her WIA shared cost $54,361.37. And I have another Resolution authorizing a fund transfer be made to the public assistance fund, taking their um, out of their 078 children's services shared costs into their transfers. Um, so for social services for $61,058.01. And then I have a resolution accepting the bid from Tesco for the 2019 Ford Transit. Uh, van on behalf of Seneca County Veterans Services. That was just a, that was a one good deal, right? Yeah, fifty-five thousand four hundred forty-five dollars. Okay. And that's all the resolutions I have. I accept the motion to accept. So moved. Second. Roll call. Any discussion? Roll call. Commissioner Gerdeson. Yes. Commissioner Gershman. Yes. Commissioner Carlos. Yes. I do have this, uh, I just want to get the title right to it here. Uh, the Cooperative Development Agreement between the townships, the city of Tiffin and their surrounding townships. All the trustees have signed, the mayor signed, and it comes to us. We had passed a resolution that we would sign it contingent upon everybody else signing it. So it's back in front of us today and it's entirely, they've agreed to a one-year extension and we're ratifying their decision, so. You need to action or we're just no. we, we already took action, but I, I just wanted to, you know, make sure the record was clear on that. Okay. All right, public comments. Ed? Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. <laughs> Have any expertise in monitors you want to share? <clears throat> well, uh, I advise Ken not to buy those Phillips back. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. That was just, you know, that's a firefighter thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I, wait, actually, I would like to say one thing. Ben Nutter, um, as citizen of Seneca County. Uh, Upstanding. Just that, uh, He's standing you know, well. I, had to laugh. <laughs> I had to laugh when you talked about um, the budgeting process taking so long. When I became a commissioner, the first year was 2005, and I'm, we, they, the outgoing commissioners passed a 30-day budget, so we had to pass a budget for the rest of 2005. And the very first day, the then administrator, Cindy Keller, handed me a file folder. Uh, it was, you know, like that thick, and it was all papers of every department, every line item, everything in the entire county of Seneca. Uh, 
Uh, on anything from a beer napkin to a ledger page. I mean, it was absolutely the most wildly inefficient thing uh, I had ever seen in my life. And uh, yeah, so yeah, so you are benefiting from uh, uh, some changes that were made that were, uh, but it was, it was really cool. And, and so then, and now, you know, it's so much more streamlined and people can spend, you know, you know their time much more wisely doing things that we need to do instead of you know getting the calculator out and erasing and starting <laughs> over and wasn't so, that long ago four five really oh. yeah no no it wasn't it was it was amazing to me that we weren't um automated uh yet mm -hmm. and so but yeah anyway merry christmas happy nice. new year <laughs> well a prolonged discussion but i remember doing bank budgets okay and and you would assume once in a while interest rates might change up or down one and a half percent, one percent, one and a quarter, whatever it might be. Every time you change one calculation, you had to go through and change each of the line items, mm. each of the savings accounts, <laughs> each of the loans. You know, for now you put the number in and it just clicks. That was the way it was too, like for workers' comp and um, you know, and the rates of tax and all. That was always the biggest problem, the, the payroll aspect yeah, of each yeah, department. Yeah, so and one it. little penny would change the entire thing. Exactly. They have to do supplemental appropriations. Which is a ledger page is a ledger page. Amazing. Tyler, anything for the city? Uh, the city just passed its budget on Monday, so we're heading into 2020, uh, ready to go. Have an extra pay period in there, but. Uh, we passed that on Monday, the day before Christmas Eve, and we're ready to go. Hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and has a Happy New Year. How's the mayor? What do you hear? He's he's going to have to have surgery, I think, here coming in January. So uh, Council President Folk will be the acting mayor, and I'll be Council President for the probably the next month. Okay, so. yeah, I just I got an email from the mayor. I said he was down. He's in a lot of pain. Yeah. Back. Keep me in your prayers. The people, the real people that run the county and the real people that run the city got back problems. <laughs> <laughs> Shoulder to level load, I guess. <laughs> uh, your time was up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I got a thing. <laughs> no, anything? Yeah, we uh, spent yesterday out with Noah. Uh, uh, spent time with, with our my family out, and we served coffee. To, uh, and there was yeah, at least a thousand people there yesterday, and, nice. and they had a great day. And uh, it's a good way to bring kids up to teach them how to give back to community. So time well spent yesterday. Yeah, it was a wonderful time out there. A lot of different outfits, I'll tell you. Oh yeah, ugly <laughs> <laughs> sweaters. It's definitely Christmas. I wouldn't call them ugly. But I think they were proud of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have anything else for the good of the order? All right, 138.